Salute YouTube. Happy Friday. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm sure you guys are too. I want to apologize real quick about the little thumbnail that popped up a little while ago. It said um, that I was going to be doing my first live show. I hope people weren't waiting. That was my plan to do my first live show tonight, but I changed my mind and decided to do this instead. I'm going to do my first live show on Sunday night when I interview Lee Cole. I want to talk tonight about Joey Calco. Now, a lot of you guys probably know about Joey Calco from Jimmy Calandra's stories. He was part of the Bath Avenue crew. Um, some of you, like myself, uh, probably already knew about Joey. Um, you know, maybe did some reading on him, some research on him, you know, before Jimmy had his YouTube channel. According to Jimmy, Joey Calco uh, was the last guy to join the crew. He was number seven, and he was a stone-cold killer. Um, one of the murders, and I, the first one I know of uh, that Joey committed was right after Georgie Adamo got killed by a guy named Fat Stevie Romano. Uh, when they couldn't find Fat Stevie, uh, Paulie G gave the order to kill his friend Neil Nastro in retaliation for Georgie's murder. So they set it up. Um, they beeped them. They had to meet them in a specific place. And when Neil Nastro got there, uh, Jimmy blocked them in. Tommy and Joey jumped out. They went over to the car. Uh, Neil Nastro just happened to have his uncle with him, a guy named Vincent the Pippo. And Tommy Reynolds shot both of them in their heads. Now, I never really understood this. Because I just can't really wrap my mind around killing the guy's friend. I know this is how it happens in the street. You know, a friend for a friend. I get that. Um, but I don't know. Something about it didn't seem right to me. Until I heard Jimmy say that Neil Nastro was in the car when Stevie Romano killed Joey Calco. I believe that's what Jimmy said. If I'm wrong, he can correct me. But that you know, makes it make a little more sense to me. Um, so they killed those guys. And after Jimmy got locked up and stuff, and he was off the street, they went on to do some other stuff. And years later, uh, Joey Calco killed a kid named Jack Sharon. Now, this one really bothers me. Jack Sharon was a 19-year-old kid, and I've heard a couple of different stories. Um, I read that Jack Sharon was one of the guys that was selling drugs for them, and he had a beeper, and he had gotten caught selling crack, and Joey Calco was under the impression that Jack Sharon might be ratting on them. I also read that Jack Sharon was simply... Uh, a friend of one of the Bath Avenue guy's brothers or something like that. And they just felt that Jack Sharon might know too much about them. I'm not sure which story is true, but as we've heard Jimmy tell, you know, they pulled up on Jack Sharon. Uh, Fabrizio was in the car. Joey Calco got out and killed Jack Sharon. On, uh, I believe it was 17th Avenue and 78th Street. Now, this one bothers me for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, it came out afterwards from the police and, you know, other sources that Jack Sharon was not riding on them at all. He was going to, you know, he took the charge and they were in no danger of him riding on them. Now, I know sometimes you can't take that chance, and apparently that's how Joey Calco felt. So they killed him. And I read a story just recently from back then that was in the New York Daily News where, you know, they talked to his father, and his father talked about how they would do yoga every day and together, and they were best friends. And, you know, his father was never the same after that. 
And I can only imagine. I don't even want to think about what losing a child would be like, but um, it's got to be devastating. And his father, you know, since then and forever will have to live without his son. So <clears throat> his story gets a little wilder and, and funny in a way. After all that, you know, he obviously gets caught up in the whole case when they all get indicted. Um, Joey Calco flipped. He testified against everybody. Um, I forget the exact sentence he got, but I believe it was eight years. And when he got out, he uh, moved to Florida. And he opened up a place named Goomba's Pizza, which couldn't be a stupider name uh, for somebody in his position in witness protection. Um, you know, I just couldn't couldn't think of a dumber name to name your pizza place, especially if you're in his shoes. But he did that. And for any of you guys who haven't seen this tape or heard about this, it's a really interesting part of Joey's story and it's honestly hilarious you can actually look it up uh you just google joey calco and you'll see world's dumbest criminals and you'll see a clip of it well you'll see the whole clip um he had this pizza place he's in witness protection at the time he's going under the name joseph milano now one night a couple of guys come in and they complain about a calzone they had purchased earlier that they weren't happy with um, Joey doesn't take this well and he decides to you, you could see him pulling a gun from under the counter the surveillance video is, is on YouTube and as he's talking to them you know he reaches under the counter he grabs the gun and um, he drops the clip you see him drop the clip and he just leaps over the counter and he pistol whips the dude and he starts rolling around with them and fighting and shit. So after that, um, a reporter gets a hold of this story and being, you know, that she's done stories on the past and the New York mob and stuff like that, she sees his picture and his name, Joseph Milano, and she says to herself, boy, this really looks like Joey Calco from Brooklyn, the mob rat. So I believe it was her, it might have been a different reporter, but I, I believe it was her that basically, um, you know, publishes the story that Joey Calco, who was in witness protection, had this incident in a pizzeria. And just like that, Joey Calco's cover is blown. Everybody knows it's him. Well, he got some time for that. I don't remember exactly how much. Uh, I want to say a little over a year. I'm not positive. That was for the assault. But then for the gun, because he's a felon, he got, uh, I think it was 13 years. And he was released not that long ago. So, you know, now, you know, you can find him. He's on Instagram and stuff like that. But I just thought this was funny because, I mean, of all the, the bonehead things to do when you skated on, you know, all these murder charges, you get a light sentence, you get out. You obviously got some money, you get to open a pizza joint, and over a calzone, you put yourself back in prison for years. So, it couldn't be a more interesting story, and I'm sure there's a lot more to it. Uh, I might have even left some murders out. Um, I'm pretty sure the only ones I know of that he is was directly involved in were the three I mentioned. Uh, but maybe Joey can elaborate that, or uh, Jimmy can elaborate on that at some point in one of his videos, or even in the comments uh, on this video. But 
That's it for that. And that's one of the reasons, though, that I'm so interested in the Bath Avenue crew, because each one of these guys has a story behind them that's, you know, kind of fascinating. And that's why I, I look forward to Jimmy Glanger's videos, and I hope to hear more of these details, because, you know, you could research these guys up and down, but a lot of what you're going to find is the same stuff. You know, it's not going to be, you're, you're not going to find, you know, 50 different stories on them. It, it's a, a lot of it revolved around that big case with Anthony Spiro and, and Joe Bonanti uh, when they all got indicted. And, you know, that those articles and stuff you find pretty much tell the story. Plus, like I said in an earlier video, Michelle Mc, McPhee has a story called, or a book called A Mob Story. And uh, that has a lot of this stuff. You know, it's got a little... A little more information, a little more detailed stuff about each member in it um, than you can find anywhere else. But it's basically, you know, the same stories. Like there's certain stories about the Bath Avenue crew that you'll um, you'll always hear. You know, when when referring to them, that that's generally what you'll find is is these these few major stories. You know, Paul Galino getting killed. Uh, Neil Mastro and, and, and uh, Vincent De Pippo, uh, the lady that accidentally got killed in the robbery, um, and then eventually the big indictment, indictment that led to you know some of them cooperating and some of them going to um, to prison for a long time. Uh, Fabrizio, I know, gets out. I believe he's in Allenwood. And he gets out in 2030. Uh, Tommy Reynolds is in Raybrook, FCI, and he gets out in 2036. But those are the only two, you know, that, that didn't flip and took their sentences. So that's all I have for that. Uh, but it's just a story I wanted to get into because, like I said, as we all know, I like these Bath Avenue stories, and that's an interesting one. I happened to be thinking about it earlier today, and I thought maybe I could fill you guys in on some details you might not know already. But if you haven't seen that video, look it up on YouTube. All you got to do is put in Joey Calco, C-A-L-C-O, and um, you'll see this this clip from World's Dumbest Criminals. Um, it's funny. It's a... It's, uh, a hell of a thing to watch so like i said i hope i didn't make any mistakes if i did i'll either correct them in another video or maybe jimmy correct can correct them for me or even some of you guys if i got anything wrong that's always the case feel free to correct me i'm not perfect i'm not an expert you know just just a kind of a historian on this stuff and uh you know i take great interest in it always have so other than that, I don't feel like I should talk about anything else tonight. The little clip I made this morning that I'm sure you guys saw, a lot of you found that funny. You know, it is what it is. It's just another thing. But I don't even really want to get into that. Um, so I'm going to end this video. Um, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I had a long week and very little sleep. So I'm going to try to uh, order some dinner for me and my family because nobody feels like cooking. And then I'm going to crash early. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow, but we're going to take some sort of a day trip. So I don't know if I'll be doing a video. If not, maybe I'll do something from the road. I don't know. But as always, guys, thank you for your continued support. Uh, the comments, the likes, you know, share my videos. That would be good. That'd be awesome. Uh, and anybody who hasn't subscribed already, please subscribe. I'm going to, you know, as I've said a million times, I'm going to get into more stuff like this, more personal stories, and um, eventually I'll be doing some interviews and stuff. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build this channel one way or the other. Um, you guys have already given me a head start like most people could only dream of. So thanks again, guys. I'll see you, if not... Tomorrow, I'll see you Sunday night uh, with Lee Cole. I believe we'll be doing it around 7.30, 7.45. And that's it. Have a good night, guys. Salute.